There are several methods for recharging of aquifers. Surface spreading is allowing the water to percolate down to shallow, unconfined aquifers on its own. Injection involves pumping the water directly into a deep, confined aquifer. Infiltration is the slow spreading of water into the subsurface. And all of these recharge methods require periodic maintenance for clogging due to sediment settling and also microbial growth. This figure shows the injection method of recharge into the confined aquifer. Almost all the recovery is done by simply reversing the pump direction and taking the water back out of the aquifer. In order to assess the potential of a site as an aquifer storage system, at least two wells are used. Water is pumped out of the aquifer in one well, while the other wells are used to monitor drawdown in the aquifer. The recorded drawdown, time, transmissivity, and storativity obtained in this experiment are used along with the fees function to quantify the quality of the aquifer for storage and recharge. This particular equation is specifically for homogeneous, isotropic, and confined aquifers. Moving on to examples of ASR sites, the first is the Yakima aquifer, which is needed to back up the current surface water drinking supply in Yakima. It's recharged in the winter with the Natchez River flow. Itself, the aquifer is a closed basin with basalt ridges, which is fairly common in Washington. It is a confined sandstone aquifer, and there's no interbasin flow. The water level here has dropped 30 feet in the last 30 years due to excessive irrigation, but currently it is being retrofitted. Um, the one existing well in the aquifer has been retrofitted, and 26 more wells were added, all with pumps that are able to deliver 2,000 gallons per minute at the required head. Uh, this was tested and 70% of the recharged water was recovered after 55 days of storage um, and that's pumping at full capacity for 30 days. The Walla Walla aquifer project was started in 1999. Uh, it is a key tool in protecting Milk Creek from fire by supplying enough water. Uh, it is a deep basalt aquifer and currently has two wells which are capable of delivering 650 to 950 megagallons per year. The injected water is treated with ozone and chlorine and to add wells in storage at this facility would require a turbidity reduction and infiltration um, due to the material in the aquifer. Although more water could be extracted, uh, due to these additional requirements, more wells have not been built and the 650 to 950 megagallons per year have proved more than adequate. The Lake Haven ASR is a 29,000 acre foot usable storage aquifer that is recharged in the winter from two sources, the Green River and the Cedar River. The aquifer consists of coarse sands and gravels confined by aquitards, so it's a confined aquifer. Currently there are three wells on the project and the water being extracted actually meets the primary drinking water standards. Uh, in the future 27 more wells are planned, however for that volume of water they will need to build a um, facility in order to clean the water after it is pumped out of the aquifer. Not all of the usable aquifer space at Lake Haven is currently filled, and more can be filled using surface water, storm water, ground water, and even reclaimed water. And this would be done with potentially all three injection methods, direct surface spreading and infiltration. Uh, the Mirror Lake aquifer part of Lake Haven is currently full, but other parts can still be filled. The Spokane Valley Aquifer is the source of water for the city of Spokane. It is 10 trillion gallons in volume with water deposits ranging from 150 feet below ground level to 600 feet below ground level. 
It is an unconsolidated, unconfined sediment aquifer, and therefore it's highly permeable. It's very high in ground velocity, which unfortunately makes it more susceptible to contamination. The aquifer is composed of quaternary age glacial fluvial sediments deposited by floods and the edges are a combination of Precambrian and Metamorphic, Mesozoic and Cenozoic intrusive, and Tertiary basaltic rocks. Even though water is being withdrawn for use of the city of Spokane from this aquifer, it is not a recovery project, and it recharges naturally using surrounding watersheds and lakes. Um, there is some return from irrigation precipitation and septic systems, uh, but groundwater inflow from Idaho uh, this, and the Spokane River are the two major sources. The discharge of the aquifer goes to the Little Spokane River and the Spokane River, uh, and about a third of the total discharge is used in the pumping wells for Spokane. The Columbia Plateau aquifer is semi-confined. It is underlain by an impermeable stratum and bounded at the top by soil layers of relatively low permeability, especially horizontally, and these layers form the aquitard in which the free water table is found. This aquifer is recharged by the water near the edges of the plateau, and by the 6 to 25 inches of rainfall annually, but due to groundwater pumping, the water level has declined to 300 feet, feet on the interior, and declines of more than a hundred feet over extensive areas. This has placed the important agricultural regions in the area at risk, and the use of this aquifer will probably be modified. The rock in the aquifer is Miocene basaltic rock, and the hydraulic conductivity of an aquifer with this kind of rock is extremely variable. However, the rock aquifer is so thick that the porosity is large enough in certain places that these aquifers are very productive. The Puget Sound has an extensive aquifer system that was created by alluvial and glacial deposits which can be more than 3,300 feet thick uh, but are generally an average of about 400 feet. And these aquifers are used extensively for groundwater supplies the most productive of these aquifers are the sand and gravel uh, deposits from the last glaciations and these make up the top 200 to 300 feet of unconsolidated deposits. However, the shallowness of these aquifers um, make pollution and contamination somewhat dangerous. To the recharge estimates for the Puget Sound system are based on precipitation, surface geology, land use, and the type of ground cover, but these rates vary a lot from year to year due to huge development booms and 6,100 year storms in the past 10 years. About half of the recharge comes from precipitation, averaging about 27 inches a year, uh, but more where deposits are coarser and less where deposits are finer. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed our presentation on aquifer storage and recovery and the aquifers of Washington State.